ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Senator and Mrs. Bob Kasten. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you for coming. Eva and I deeply appreciate your help. And how about this president? Isn't he terrific? <clears throat> we welcome you back to our wonderful state. Americans, we're free people everywhere. Commend your commitment to strength and your fight for peace. Mr. President, we're proud of you here in this country, too. Proud of your strength at the helm, at the comfort that Americans have with your president. Proud of your work and what your determination has meant for all of us. A country back at work, a country where we've beat inflation, and put new life into our economy, where hope and optimism yeah. In 1980-86, we say we can do better than Ed Garner, that he has come here today to support all of us and to help us in our efforts during this last few days. Won't you join me in giving a wonderful Wisconsin welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. I, I, thank you very much. But before I get into my remarks, let me give you a news bulletin. This morning, the Commerce Department just reported the biggest jump in durable goods orders in two years, about 5%. And what this means is more production and more jobs in the future. Our, our four-year-long our four economic recovery looks like it's headed for a second boom. We can let the good times roll again in America if we keep. Bob Caston and company in the Senate, too. Uh, if we keep... If we keep the big spenders out of Washington just two more years, help me. <laughs> now, I thank Senator Kasten for that very kind introduction and a very special thanks to the North Waukesha High School Band. Now, before I came out, 
I heard them playing a particular song that brought back many great memories to me. No other fight song has been adopted by so many high schools across the land, my own included. As a matter of fact, I was halfway through my high school football career before I knew that it was on Wisconsin and not Onward Dixon. <laughs> on my way in, I saw a lot of young people here today, and I have a special message for all of the young people here from my roommate. Uh, 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 when it comes to drugs, please, for yourself, your families, for your future, and for your country, just say no. I want to tell you that Nancy has impressed me so much on this point that the other day in Iceland, even though it didn't have to do with drugs, I just said no. <laughs> but it's, it's wonderful to be here in Wisconsin and really good to be back on the campaign trail. It almost feels like 1980 all over again. You know, as I said to my staff when we were taking off in the Air Force One, it's great to be out of Washington and back where the real people are. Yeah. Now, you know with your excellent Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner here and, and with uh, the Senator here, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to say anything about the institution of the Congress of the United States, but there are some changes that are needed there. And with regard to some of the people there, some of them remind me of the three fellows that came out of a building one day and found they'd locked themselves out of the car. And one of them said, well, you get me a wire coat hanger. I can straighten it out. I can fix it. I can get in and lift the handle. And the second one said, you can't do that. They think we're stealing the car. Third one said, well, we better do something pretty quick because it's starting to rain and the top's down. <laughs> but it's great to be here with so many old friends, Wisconsin's excellent Congressman James Sensenbrenner and Governor Tommy Thompson. You know, having been a governor myself for eight years, I think I recognize good governor material when I see it. And believe me, Tommy Thompson is the best. I became governor of California after a liberal, free-spending, high-taxing administration like Tony Earls. I made tough choices and hard decisions, and I know that Tommy Thompson will do the same here in Wisconsin. We've turned the country around, and now it's time to bring the revolution home to Wisconsin and elect Tommy Thompson as your next governor. And if Tommy is tomorrow's star, today's star is Bob Caston. Bob is a man of proven ability, one of the key players in Washington, and a tough, effective fighter for Wisconsin, just one of the best darn senators in the whole United States Senate. Now, now believe me, we need Bob Caston in the U.S. Senate to keep America on the track of growth, prosperity, and freedom. It's no secret that there are still some folks in Washington who want to put America full speed in reverse, back to the days when big government, taxes, and inflation were destroying our economy, and military weakness made America a punching bag for fanatics and dictators around the world. America used to wear a kicks me sign around the neck. Now we threw that sign away, and it reads, don't tread on me.
Just as Bob said when he was up here, it's important to remember those days five and a half years ago because the tax and spend crowd is still lurking in the shadows, just waiting for a second chance. The liberal leadership of the Democratic Party hasn't changed. They're just itching to raise your taxes and rev up that inflationary money machine. The Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, spoke for them all last year when he said, and I quote, should the American people pay through the nose by taxation? The answer is yes. Well, 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 come November, the American people will be going to the polls and saying loud and clear, sorry, Tip, the answer is no. Yesterday, I signed a piece of historic legislation to overhaul our country's tax code, making it fairer and simpler and cutting taxes for almost every individual taxpayer. But wouldn't you know it, even before the bill reached my desk, the liberal Democrat leadership came out and said they wanted to raise your taxes and to turn tax reform into a tax hike. Well, Bob was one of the first senators pushing for fairer and lower taxes. And he agrees with me that raising tax rates now would be an intolerable breach of faith with the American people. And that's why I've asked every candidate for national office to sign a pledge not to raise the rates on tax reform to keep them low and fair. But I think I think you should know Bob Caston signed up right away, but so far his opponent has refused to sign. I think that tells the whole story right there. The truth is the liberal Democratic leaders never met a tax they didn't like. And when it comes to spending your hard-earned money, those liberals act like they've got your credit card in their pocket, and believe me, they never leave home without it. Well, you're the people, you're the people who pay the taxes, and you know that we don't have a deficit because we're taxed too little. We have a deficit because Congress spends too much. It's, it's about time that Congress cut the federal budget and left the family budget alone. But you know, sometimes I don't think the liberal Democrats will ever change their thinking. But then, as I've always said, you don't have to make them see the light, just make them feel the heat. <laughs> so let's make them feel the heat on this election day. Yeah. But you know, even the liberals who bottled up our tough anti-crime bills for years have begun to climb aboard our campaign to rid America of the scourge of drugs. We have much more to do in this area. We'll need to back up the new drug legislation with strict enforcement, perhaps even stiffer penalties, and the kind of no-nonsense judges that we will put on the bench unless we're denied that chance by a Democratic Senate. We need the Republican Senate. We need Bob Caston. Now, there's another, another issue that Bob and I feel strongly about, and I bet you do too. That's keeping America strong and proud and peaceful and free. As you know, I just recently returned from my meeting with Mr. Gorbachev in Iceland. That meeting was a breakthrough in our discussions with the Soviets. We're no longer talking about arms control. We're talking about arms reductions, possibly even the complete elimination of ballistic missiles from the face of the Earth. Now, that's an historic turnaround for the Soviets, and it wouldn't have been possible without the firm support of you, the American people, whose hard work and support have enabled us to rebuild our military might. The American people know that the only way to negotiate for peace is from a position of strength. We're closer to real arms reductions than ever before, and it's because America today is once again strong and united.
But one major obstacle remained in Iceland. Unfortunately, Mr. Gorbachev decided to make all our progress hostage to his demand that we kill our strategic defense initiative. I had to remind him of my pledge to the American people on SDI, and that in America, when you give your word, you keep your word, and that stands up no matter what the time or place. SDI is our insurance policy to protect us from accidents or some madman or some other country that develops ballistic missiles or in case of the Soviets who don't keep their side of the bargain. No responsible president could rely on Soviet promises for his country's safety. The record on their treaty violations is clear. We can either bet on American technology to keep us safe or on Soviet promises and each has its own track record. I'll bet on American technology any day. One thing that's come out of all this discussion now since that trip about SDI is that a great many Americans, I don't think, quite understood what we were talking about with those initials. SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative, is a purely defensive and purely peaceful technology. If the Soviets honestly want progress toward a world free of nuclear weapons, they have nothing to fear from SDI. Soviets are hard bargainers. We must even be more patient and determined and united. We must speak with one voice, saying loud and clear, we'll walk the extra mile for peace but we'll never gamble with America's safety. So, so I want to ask you a question. I'll bet I know the answer. Can I count on your support to keep America strong and united and on the road to peace? I was... I was sure you'd say that. And, you know, if I could interject something here, there's nothing that I'm prouder of than the young men and women who make up the armed forces of the United States. Hey, they're some of the most splendid young people this nation has ever produced. And let me say this, if we must ever ask them to put their lives on the line for the United States of America. They deserve the finest weapons and equipment that money can buy, and I'm going to do my best, and so is Bob, and so is the Congressman Sensenbrenner here, to see that they get that kind of equipment. And weapons. And it's because of the quality of the men and women in our armed forces the quality of the weapons they carry in defense of this country today, that every nickel and dime dictator the world over knows that if he tangles with the United States of America, he will have a price to pay. Yeah. Yes, we're once again united in hope and strong in purpose. We have, as Bob told you, squashed inflation, We've cut the prime interest rate by two-thirds. We're keeping the doors of the Opportunity Society wide open by cutting tax rates further and spurring on the economic expansion that has already created almost 11.7 million new jobs. <laughs> this year, more Americans are working than ever before. And the proportion of working age people employed is the highest in the history of the United States. Now that, you may not know that I didn't know it until I got buried in the bureaucracy up there. But what is considered to be the potential employment pool in the United States is every human being, 16 years of age, male or female, and up. And today, highest level, as I say, 61.3% of the people in that group are employed in the United States. That is the, that's the highest in our history. I just know that a state whose motto is forward and whose official song is on Wisconsin is going to want a fighter. 
and a man with bold vision for the future and the talent, imagination, and willpower to take us there. I just know that Wisconsin is going to send Bob Caston back to the United States Senate. I, I don't think Wisconsin wants a senator like Bob's opponent who belongs to the tax and spend liberal wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, he's offering nothing positive in his campaign. And I'm just proud that Bob is going forward with his record of achievement. You know, very few freshman senators have made the mark that Bob Caston has. A pioneer in tax reform and one of the leaders in putting America back on tra track to strength abroad and prosperity at home. In the Senate and in the White House, Bob Caston's opinions count. He's earned the respect and admiration of his colleagues, and he's earned Wisconsin's vote. And we need him to stay right where he is in the Senate. Now, you know, we're talking about more than just one man. His election could well decide whether we keep control of the Senate or lose it to the liberal leadership of the Democratic Party. And that's the difference between two more years of progress or two more years of paralysis. I didn't seek re-election to be a six-year president. There are too many exciting challenges still before us, too much business that still must be completed. I cannot and I will not have my hands tied by a Congress that is totally hostile to all that we're trying to do. You know, my name will never be on the ballot again. But, uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I hope you mean you hope I'll live four more years. The con <laughs> Constitution speaks to the other. Uh, but if you want to vote for me, vote for Bob Caston so that we can have a Republican Senate that will work with me instead of against me and be around after I'm gone. Uh, and I'm not... I'm not just asking that for me. Do it for yourself. Do it for Wisconsin. Do it for America. Now, maybe you've noticed that I've been careful to refer to the liberal leadership of the Democratic Party. That's because I believe that the liberals who've taken control of that once great party don't represent the vast majority of hardworking patriotic Democrats found throughout America. I would have to feel that there are probably some here in this audience today. Maybe some are ex-Democrats also, like I am. Maybe some still haven't switched. But I know, how, I know how tough it can be to break with tradition. But I remember what Winston Churchill once said when he was in the Parliament of England and changed parties. And when he was criticized for it, he said, some men change principle for party, and some men change party for principle. <laughs> All I'm asking the people of Wisconsin is to remember that the senator you elect will determine the future, your future, America's future. So before I go, let me just conduct an informal poll. <laughs> Do you want to go back to the days of big spending, high taxes, and runaway inflation? No! Do you want a weak and vacillating America? No! That's good to hear. <laughs> Would you, would you rather have low taxes, low inflation, and low interest rates? Yes! Would you rather have an America that is strong and proud and free? Yes! Do you want Bob Caston as your senator for the great state of Wisconsin? Yes! Do you want Tommy Thompson as your governor? Yes! And I... Well, thank you. You just made my day. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so pleased to be able to talk with so many young people that I can see who are here today. 
I, I, just, I just want to finish by saying you're what it's all about. You know, back at the beginning of World War II, General George Marshall, the Army Chief of Staff, was asked if the United States had a secret weapon as we went into that war, and what was it? He said, George Marshall said, just the best blankety blank, well, just the best darn kids in the world. Now, he didn't say darn exactly, but presidents aren't allowed to talk like generals. Well, I've been seeing your generation all over the country in rallies like this one, and I know that if George Marshall were here today, he'd stay, still say, we've got the best blankety-blank kids in the world. So, so when it comes to election, <laughs> thank you. I love you. So when it comes to election time, I hope you'll remember how important that your vote is, because it's your future that's being voted in this election, America's future. And I just want to tell you one thing, though, that I, a reminder here, and I know that none of you are guilty or you wouldn't be here. We find out from all the polling that in the age group from 18 to 24, that's where our party stands with the strongest support the most. But that happens to be the voting group that has the smallest percentage of going to the polls and voting. So when you go home and when you talk to your friends, if they're 18 or over, tell them they've got to get there. Go to the polls on election day. While you're there, vote win one for Bob Caston and Tommy Thompson, Jim Sensenbrenner, and uh, win one for Wisconsin's all-star congressional team. Win one for your future. Win one for America. And again, on that voting and the necessity of it, let me just tell you, uh, Will Rogers, not known to many of you young people, a great humorist in our country, once said that the people you elect and send to public office are no better and no worse than the people who send them there. But he said, they're all better than those who don't vote at all. Go to the polls. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Mr. President, today, about uh, an hour and a half ago, when you left Washington for the send-off from the White House, you said that there were a couple of thousand people wishing you well as you began the campaign trail for all of us who are running to keep the Republican majority in the United States Senate. I'd like to give you what I hope will be the first of a number of shirts and t-shirts as you go across the country campaigning. Welcome to the Caston campaign, Mr. President. Thank <laughs> you.